Okay. Okay. So, <clears throat> We had on basically. Let's go back to the word hoof balance again. I want to drive home a couple uh, thoughts about uh, uh, the things we've been talking about. Okay? Again, I want to talk about the parameters the hoof pastern axis, the center of articulation, the ground surface. These are the three things that we're looking at. We want to incorporate or enclose the back of the horse's foot. And if you don't have enough hoof wall to trim to the base of the frog or the, the widest part, whatever you want to call it, you can bring your shoe back there to that, in other words, to compensate for it. Okay? Alignment of the digit. Okay? Again, if you have alignment of the digit, you have the horse bearing weight on the whole bottom of the bone. Okay? So this has been in the literature, this has been reviewed. The foot is trimmed or shot appropriately, and the hoof angle is correct for an individual horse when the dorsal hoof wall and the dorsal surface of the pastern are parallel. And you can basically achieve this in any horse. So when you think about the length of your toe trimming to that, all you really have, the outside part of it, is the heel, isn't it? Okay. Here's your center of articulation. Again, this is some wonderful work was done by Dr. Collies in England. Okay? Again, this was with 100 or 150 uh, horses with ideal feet. They determined the center of rotation and how these horses did best. Again, that's your Palmer angle. You like to have a little bit more angle on the back of the coffin bone than you do in the front. Why? Because when that horse bears weight, he wants to sink down into his foot. In other words, use the physiology of his foot. If he's got a negative palmar angle, he ain't got nowhere to go because he's got no structures in the back of his foot. Okay? Okay? Again, there's another way of looking at a center of rotation. We want to have basically as wide as we are long. Okay? This is your ground reaction force. This is going to be your deep digital flexor tendon there. Okay? Here, if we look at it again, here's our feral horse. Look at the widest part of the foot there. Okay? The horse did it himself. Here's another way, if you wanted to go ahead and divide this foot, there's many different ways to do this, and I promise you, go home, do it yourself. Follow the hoof wall tubules. Put, the, put a line in there. Split this horse in half. In other words, figure out the center of rotation. You would go there, okay? Pick this horse's foot up. You're basically going to be at the widest part of the foot, okay? Same way when you finish off with your shoe, okay? You're coming to the base of the frog, and you want your shoe to be basically as wide as it is long. Okay. I put this slide back in here to drive a couple points home. Again, we want to trim to the base of the frog. Why do we want it? Because we want to go ahead and we want to contain those soft tissue structures all together. So everything works in unison. Soft tissue plus bone. Okay. This is a wonderful drawing by Andy Parks. He's a surgeon in Georgia. And this is diagrammatically, here's your coffin bone, okay? And here's your bars of your foot. Here's the back of your foot. So look at this here. This is the part that your bone is taking up. Now look at all this part here that is soft tissue. We want to contain the whole thing within the hoof capsule so it works. Biomechanically, it has to work because if you don't have a set, if you have the widest part of the foot, and if you don't have equal distances or, or 60, 40, somewhere close, you don't have both parts of, of, of your foot working. Okay? Again, there you can see the distance that we have that are soft tissue for the foot. Here's a horse again. What I want to bring <coughs> heels trimmed to the base of the frog. You have a nice bar here. Here's the angle of the sole. What I like it is when I can take a rasp and rub it across there, and you see where my rasp just starts to nick the frog. Just starts to nick it. So if I put a, a uh, if I put a rasp around there uh, on there, it's going to go ahead and it's going to going to going to cover. It's going to touch everything going all the way across, not just part of it. Okay. Breakover again is plays a big role. You don't have to. I'm not a fan of these setbacks or let's set the shoe back or natural balance or whatever. I am. Really, uh, we've been doing this for 30 years since I learned the farrier trade, taking a grinder or a hot rasp or whatever, and grinding breakover into the shoes. Look where your breakover starts. You can contain your whole hoof capsule, but you can put your breakover back anywhere you want on the shoe. You don't have to have the foot set way back there. Okay? I want to say just a couple words about bar shoes. We haven't used egg bar shoes in probably 10 years. And one of the reasons, if you look at this particular horse, Okay, you see he's got an egg bar shoe on there. He's got a couple degree wedge pad on here. Here's the end of his foot. Okay, there's the end of his foot. 
Okay, so all this, this frog or all this bar and everything here is being pushed on soft tissue. Now let's look at it in real life. Here's a horse, again, egg bar shoe. There's the end of his heel. Okay, that's what it looks like from the bottom. Okay, now here, here let's look at him radiographically. Okay, now let's take the wedge out of there. Look at the distance we have from here to here. We have from there to there. He has no protection there. He has nothing to hold this bar up. Yet we have a bar here that is now creating a lever in the back. In other words, like having a long tail. Now we got a long heel. Forces this horse to put his heel down on the ground, okay, and then puts more pressure on the heel, crushes the heel, uh, stops it for, uh, you know, get me going. Okay. Okay, now you can hear, here's the end of the heel. Okay, now look at where, okay, look at where your bar and your pad was. It was all sitting on soft tissue. So it was not meant to bear the horse's weight. Oh, it looks good. We're going to support your horse, ma'am. Support what? Okay, so this is where I have the problem is the function to support the heels. But if the heels have grown forward, you've lost the bars, you've got a big old frog sitting out there, what are you going to support? What are you going to hold up? Okay? <clears throat> so it places the weight bearing on soft tissue, and I've always had problems of how you support a structure that's not there, or it no longer has the ability to accept weight. If you're going to use a bar shoe, we use uh, straight bar shoes, and we use a pile of them. You can see the breakover cut in here. Okay? It's what it looks like from behind. It fits the hoof capsule. Again, and on the bottom, your foot's as wide as it is long. Okay? <clears throat> There's a horse I just did a couple days ago up in Massachusetts. Again, just showing you we're as wide as we are long. He's got a little heel elevation sheet. Real nice dressage horse from Holland. Okay? But that's basically what we like to see in a horse. Okay? There's a lot of, this was in, uh, in the United States Equestrian Magazine last month. Okay, this is a, a plastic shoe out of Australia. And um, there is a pony shoes, and there's plastic ones, and there's all kinds of composites, whatever. Okay, and what, the point I'm trying to make is, where's the proof? And I think Dr. Clayton was just talking about, where's the proof that these shoes? Everybody can, you and I can, you and I can have Steve's shoe tomorrow, and you know, we can market it. There's no proof behind these things that there's that they're helpful at all. In fact, in some of these horses, we see that the foot actually falls apart more. So uh, I just, you know, with all the things you're going to read, whatever, uh, uh, Frank and I have had this conversation. When I go to the Farrier's Convention every year, there's always be a whole bunch of new hoof care products out. And I take a notebook with me. And, you know, come here, Doc, look at this. And I, I, I look at it, you know, and it's, it's sort of far out. I write it down, you know. And I go back the next year. Okay? And if it's still there, I put a check beside it. Okay? And if I go back a third year and it's there, I look at it. Okay? Because uh, 65, 70% of them are gone the next year. Okay? They're, they're, they're not there. If people think horseshoeing fairy makes my world go around. This is what makes my world go around. This is my daughter, Jinde or Gino Grady. Thank you very much. I hope I didn't put you to sleep, but I, I hope that was helpful rather than trying to tell you how to do your work. Okay?